Hi there, welcome back. Today I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn on what I usually present on my channel and I'm going to go over an experience that I've had when I was younger, maybe 25 years old. This was a meditation retreat I went to. This was by the organisation called Goinka or uh, Goinka. I don't actually know what it was called. But anyway, it's a 10 day retreat where you are in sight. Well, let me start at the beginning. So I was looking to be able to progress more and deeper into meditation. I've been meditating at home a bit, doing concentration meditation for four or five years. And I thought this 10 day retreat sounds like a good idea. I'm trying to go a bit deeper, trying to get maybe into a higher state of meditation. I would heard a little bit about it on some podcasts. I'd read a few reviews, some of which were a little bit scary. If you know, based in India saying that every every day there'd be less and less food. <laughs> basically, which was came down to the fact that it was India and it was the food and everything was bought by donations. So I guess if people stop donating because or people stop going to these particular retreats because the food's not great or there's not enough food, then there's even less people going because not, because there's less food it means even less people want to go because it gets a bad, a, a bad experience or a bad uh, review, uh, word of mouth. Anyway, so I thought I'd give this a go. And if I'm completely honest, one of the reasons I went because it is donation based. So it's free if you want it to be, or you can donate as much money as you want. I was not very well off at the time, so I gave a very minimal amount. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So I went over to just to the west of England, which I think is Herefordshire. And really nice bit of the country, really green open space. And this site was based on 11 acres of land. So I arrived there in the afternoon. I think it was a train and a taxi I took. And I was looking around thinking, OK, is everyone kind of going to be a bit weird? What's going on? Are these people all super spiritual? No idea what was going to happen. Luckily, the first day or the rest, the rest of the first day, you're allowed to talk to people who have finished the previous uh, event or and talk to the other people who are going to be attending this uh, this session and I met this really nice guy from America who just completed his session and he said it was really interesting quite intense and he's going to stay on and work as a volunteer in the kitchens to feed everyone because the whole place is run by volunteers yeah I guess it's a charity and so I put my things in my room I had a chat to some other people and they all seemed nice enough and I can't remember exactly how it worked, but there was a time period where you're not allowed to talk past that. So it's a silent retreat past that point. And you're not allowed your phone or any books or anything like that. So it's kind of an environment to really try to squeeze your mind, and focus it on the meditation. So I thought, great, OK. So I went to my room, I put my bags down and I started to settle in. But I had to share a room, which is, you know, not un unexpected. I think the whole place was a converted farmhouse or farm buildings. And I was in a stable <laughs> and this guy turned up and he was, uh, but I couldn't speak to him. And, you know, I'm not even supposed to make eye contact or do any nonverbal communication. So he went in the other bed and uh, I didn't say anything. I went to bed and I think if I remember correctly, this being about 10 years ago now, I woke up at four o'clock in the morning when we were supposed to wake up and there's a bell goes around and uh, uh, it's one of the volunteers ringing a bell. and you then go out of your room and you go to the meditation hall where you will wait in silence and don't make eye contact and don't hold the door open for anyone and it's all very head down and you go into the hall you find your meditation space and you're talked to by the main instructor slash assistant teacher and he gives you the instructions so the first three days i think it was concentration meditation so just focusing on the breath on your upper lip which was fine. I, at the time, had a shoulder injury, uh, which had not quite healed properly. So uh, sitting for long periods of time, so you were expected to sit for, I think it was an hour or two first thing in the morning, then you would go back to your room and you would meditate there for an hour, I think it was, then you'd go off to breakfast, and then a few more some sessions of meditation, then you could walk in the grounds and, uh, yeah walk in the grounds to do some walking meditation 
without talking to anyone. So I decided I would bring in a coin that I would learn to flip on my fingers because it's not really doing anything, but it's a way to entertain myself. So that was keeping me busy. But after the first couple of days, because you're waking up at three or four in the morning or something ridiculous, I was not getting enough sleep for me. I, I need eight hours of sleep, but I think I was getting six, four, maybe if I'm lucky. And it was really starting to drag. So <laughs> after the morning meditation session, I would go back to my room and just sleep. And that was fine by me. So breakfast was all vegetarian, which is, it was all very nice. I think it was mostly porridge with prunes. And yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough. It was tough. Uh, after the third day, you started to move on to, was it a different type of meditation? It was called Vipassana, Vipassana inside meditation, which basically involved you focusing on a certain part of your body and noticing any changes in that. And then you would slowly increase, move your attention up the body and then down the body, noticing any changes, which I, and from what I understand, it's supposed to make you understand impermanence because everything changes and it's because it's part of your own body, it's more impactful. I didn't really get any of that. Again, I mentioned this in some of my earlier videos. I can't really visualize things in my mind. So that made this a little bit abstract and it just felt like I was, you know, not very helpful. But anyway, so I did this for for, the, for all the days that I was supposed to. I, I got to about the day, I think it was day eight, and I thought I was going to crack and have a bit of a meltdown. So a little bit of a personal side of this. So I am a very bad snorer. And <laughs> I wasn't able to communicate this to my roommate, who... Uh, I felt very bad for that to put up with my snoring. I felt very guilty and I couldn't apologise. I didn't warn them because they arrived late and I didn't have a chance to speak to them while before the rule of silence had been instigated. So I felt very bad. So I ended up going to the assistant teacher. Well, no, I didn't go to the assistant teacher first. I tried to just take my bag and leave, but all the doors are locked and uh, I think it was a break time or a walking time. And I tried to get out and I met the same American guy who was working in the kitchen. I was like, hey, I'm much, I'm going to go. I'm just going to get my bag and go. And a lot of the your phones and things are in a locker by the front door because you're not supposed to have your phones with you, even though my roommate did and he made a number of calls. And so yeah, so, but he said, oh no, don't, you know, I'm not supposed to be talking to anyone. I made a vow of silence, but I was like, I need to get out of here. So one of the other members said, hey, let's, let's, if you want to go, that's fine. But first, come and talk to the teacher, the assistant teacher, and he'll kind of talk you through it. So I basically, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I cried cried to this guy. It's like, look, I feel so guilty, this guy. I, I'm snoring. It's terrible. He's going to hate me. Um, I, I don't want to impact him. I feel really bad. I'll just go. Or I'll try another time. It's like, no, 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 don't worry. I'm you know, understandable. It's very nice of you. But uh, we're going to start doing a type of meditation. Uh, it's kind of like a soothing balm. Everyone kept saying a soothing balm of uh, meta meditation, loving kindness meditation. It's like, yeah, don't worry about it. Just you know, hang on another day. So like, okay, right. So I went back, and um, turns out this guy uh, had. I'm not sure if it was. Uh, he had some, whether it was emotional or, or mental kind of issues, he was struggling with. Uh, he was very much into numerology, uh, I believe in numbers having specific powers. So he could only stay until day nine. I later found out when talking to some of the other people on the course. And so he, and he had to sit in a specific place in the line of people meditating. And when the instructor asked you to come to front and kind of say to him, you know, how has your experience been today of meditation? You're allowed to talk to the instructor in these instances. He would give some kind of cryptic answers rather than saying, oh, I'm feeling this. It's like he would say, oh, I don't want to talk about it or hmm, which kind of made me lead something was a little bit off. And one one night, one one night I woke up and uh, found that he was just looking out the window, staring. And uh, I assumed he just got annoyed and I heard him from my story. But I later found that he'd been going out at night into the wooded area and punching trees. So, you know, even though the experience I don't practice today, they they were recommending that you do an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening of meditation. 
I, I don't do that, but it was interesting to learn a bit more about the style. I'm glad I made it out alive. <laughs> it sounds like some people might have, might have uh, been struggling and misdirected some of that energy. But um, yeah, so I think all these things were trying to stress the body into making some kind of breakthrough is my only re um, only thinking why this happened. So hunger and lack of sleep. There was a, a video kind of, what do we call it, a lecture by Mr. Goinka or Goinka, the instructor. And he kind of went through some of the processes and some of the more spiritual elements, which I didn't really identify with. Uh, I was <laughs> I was very wary because I've heard some people say, oh, so Nick, you're off to a cult, are you? I was like, no, no, it's not a cult. It's just an instruction. So I was very much holding in there that, OK, don't get indoctrinated into anything weird. Uh, but everyone was very pleasant and uh, they, they didn't make you do anything, which was good. And there was enough food and, and water and uh, and everything, so that was all good. And yes, it was it was an interesting experience, and not unpleasant. It was very very intense. And uh, yeah, afterwards, after we all started talking, the the silence vow had been broken or taken away. Let's say uh, we all had a nice chat about things and how hard it was and. The one guy I'd met and I was having a chat with saying, oh, you know, I just couldn't concentrate. Uh, so I just named all the albums of this particular band and all the songs and all the bands and all in his head. Uh, so I'm glad to see I wasn't the only one struggling. <laughs> but all in all, it was an interesting experience. Uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> it was an interesting experience. So if you're thinking of going to it, uh, I think the place was called Dippy Dharma. Uh, over in Herefordshire. I'm pretty sure they do this all over the world, though. It's kind of a, a franchise McDonald's uh, version of, of meditation training. Uh, you can be done anywhere, and they just show these videos and work to these rules. Uh, yeah, it could be. Well, it's intense. <laughs> I don't know if that's helped anyone, but uh, if you're thinking about it, that's what I've experienced. So good luck to you. <laughs>